Tomorrow on CBLT Morning, Rod Connie Bear brings back the era of swing. And businessman Kingsley Ward talks about life after heart surgery. Here on Channel 5. I'm Nancy Jackson. You know, Rosedale's a wonderful place to live. It's full of all kinds of paradoxes. You can say one thing about it, and the opposite is also true. If we had a show like Dynasty up here, there'd be lots of rich material in Rosedale. But that in itself is a cliche. So I want you to come and meet some of my neighbors. We love Rosedale. It's home for us. Now, the Bay is kicking off one spectacular boot sale. It's the Bay's Ladies Boot Bonanza. You're going to fall head over heels over the prices. Savings up to 35%. $59.99 will buy you this little leather booty, uh, beauty in a wide range of colors and styles. Or, on the other hand, or in this case, foot, uh, $34.99 will cover your feet with these fabulous boots. $59.99, $34.99. Savings. <laughs> it's a boot. <laughs> That's all.
this is the shower massage from Waterpik. If you don't have one, smart enough. It has five settings. Normal, invigorating massage, relaxing massage. I'm big on this one. And two combo settings. They make your body feel great, especially naked. Besides, you won't miss any phone calls while you're in the shower. Leave me alone, I'm in the shower. The original shower massage. Some say it's a paradise for the stuffy, but for me it's a haven for architectural delight. Tony Adamson, architect and city planner. The heyday, the, the sort of great high period of Rosedale, was between 1884 and 1914, I think. And that was a period in uh, which a most remarkable style of architecture was popular. It got to be called the Queen Anne style, for no good reason. But for better or worse, it was a style that tried to get away from the heavy profusion of high Victorians into an asymm asymmetrical bunch of buildings, but each one of them had some little quirk, some eccentricity, some oh little turret or uh, knobs on the top or uh, oriel windows sticking out in curious shapes so that as you walk around rosedale today you can see really it's like a, a theater set it's such fun <laughs> The comeback, I think, for Rosedale has started in, I don't know, late 70s. And today, in 1980, 84, uh, it's pretty hard to buy a house in Rosedale under half a million. Catherine Leggett. Yes, I'm very, very comfortable in Rosedale. Very. Uh, Rosedale is that kind of a place. It holds you close and it protects you. It's a very protective sort of community. It's very definitely a community you feel you belong in, almost like a little village all by itself. Former MPP for Rosedale, Margaret Scrivener. I think that Rosedale is one of the most vital uh, and spirited communities. And I don't think of it as a community. I think of the Rosedales, and there are two of them, North and South. I think of the Rosedales as being a village. Everybody knows we have a small but very effective bus system here. And, and that's not to be, you know, underplayed. We have bus drivers that when you get on in the morning, they say good morning and they know everybody on site. Former Toronto Mayor Alan Lamport. My grandfather uh, owned uh, a big part of this land in here. And uh, uh, we tried to get on this uh, street as a family. My father did when I was a young boy. And then, of course, we've since tried as uh, my daughters and their husbands and uh, so on. But of course, uh, they want to keep us out. They think well, maybe we're, we're not the best type for this uh, street. But however, we live in Rosedale now and uh, enjoy it thoroughly, and particularly. And my latest grandchildren, well, in fact, all of my grandchildren went to the Rosedale School just over here. And of course, they're going to private schools now and have. But uh, they make a lot of strong friends in here. And it's a great, great family area. And it's great for Toronto. It's a great stability for the whole, the whole country to see what can be done with the home and the family life. Mrs. John Ban, her daughter and granddaughter. Five generations. My grandparents were here, my mother and father were here, then I was here, I raised my daughter here, 
and now my granddaughter. That makes five generations, all in Rosedale. There's still lovely gardens. There's still beautiful ravines. It's more of a traditional neighborhood. Tradition is a word you hear a lot of in communities like this one. There's some worth keeping and some that definitely should be thrown away. Meet writer Sarah Sheard and her mother Gloria as they reminisce about some of Rosedale's quirkier customs. <laughs> well, I don't think you hear that sort of thing anymore. I think there are a lot of quaint little social customs, you know, the, the code of the people who, who were uh, second and third generation Rosedale um, had their little signs and signals and so on that uh, they would um, teach their children so that they could protect them from associating with people who they thought were unsuitable, my dear. I love these stories. <laughs> well, people of my generation, when they were little, they were taught by their mothers that uh, when their mother gave them the little quiet and OCD, that uh, they had better just back and away OCD, from now what's that? Not our class, dear. Ooh. Well, people don't say that to their children anymore, I, I, I don't think. Hi, ladies. Hello. Didn't we get lucky? That's great. Yeah. Novelist Timothy Finley went to Rosedale Public School in the 40s and Sarah followed 20 years later. Walking the old route to school is bound to spark memories for any Rosedale kid. Hey, Look at this. Perkins Bull. Perkins Bull's old house. Yeah. Yeah. The tales of terror that are surrounding that house. I bet there are ghosts. There should be. Once, when I was a kid, and this is a long time ago, I'm talking about the 1940s. Yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Walking past the house, I think on this side of the street, I don't think we ever walked on that side of the street. We were so afraid. It was scary, that side. The doors burst open. And there he was, boom, like that, with the beard. And he wore a cape. Do you remember a cape? Does anybody else remember a cape? This is before he my time. He wore a cape. And he came out and he saw children. And I'm sure what went through his mind was, Oh, yes, children are supposed to be afraid of me. So he immediately went into the act of sort of uh, <laughs> wearing us on being, the thing. Being was fearsome. Great. That's yeah. great. And, uh, and then we pretended we could hear the screams of that lady in the cellar. Who That's was right. Down there. That's what we were always in told. It was a mad woman, and she was kept in the basement, and there were bars on the windows. I wonder how true any of it. things about growing up and going to Rosedale Public School is I never really had the chance to meet kids who were Chinese or Japanese or black or, or Italian or anything other than more or less the kinds of people that I was. Yes, and the wasp. The people. wasp majority. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't 100% wasp as far as I was aware. Yes. And uh, it wasn't until I really was a grown up that I even got to know people like that. Yes. Yeah. Boy, this is different. There is lockstone, really. We yeah. never had lockstone. No. And we're standing here in front of the principal's office. Oh, indeed. I feel guilty already. <laughs> can imagine sitting here under the watchful eye. Of an, in, in my day, it was Mr. Uh, French. Oh, yeah? And I can remember when we graduated that uh, we had autograph books, and we brought our autograph books to the principal. And he signed an impeccable handwriting, enter these halls to learn, leave them to serve. Oh, wow. Wow, eh? Oh, wow, yes. That, that really sums up Rosedale. In right? a way. I mean, you, you could say that that was the motto of the district in a funny kind of way. The habit of service is ingrained uh, uh, because they come to it um, at an early age, and, and, and it just becomes an attitude. And so when it comes to then the preservation of the environment and of this particular community, they do that too. I'm David Kent, president of the South Rosedale Ratepayers. The Ratepayer Association in South Rosedale is the longest association in continuous operation in our history. It started in 1902. ...of welcoming all of you who have turned out on this historic occasion. You 
The plaque says, Rosedale Villa, named Rosedale by Sheriff Jarvis's wife, Mary. It was the heart of the Jarvis estate, which was subdivided in 1854 and became Canada's first garden suburb. So much for Don Mills. There we have it. Nothing like being in your mother's backyard to feel at home. Meet Mrs. McBain and Mrs. McIntosh, both Rosedale ratepayers and proud of it. I've lived here since 1905 on the corner of Crescent Road and Clooney Drive in the house that was built by Sir William Mackenzie for his daughter. And then my father bought it in 1905. And all this was a farm when we came here. My parents have lived there for 60 years and we, we see our neighbors quite a lot, but almost all the neighbors have changed. And I think it's because from the time of the war, the end of the war on, it changed so rapidly. People moved in and out that you've lost track of them. Because we used to know the names of people in every house. And thank goodness for the Rosedale ratepayers. <laughs> we would have had high rises and everything else. We would have practically had gas stations here. If we hadn't had, if we hadn't fought all these blasted developers, they would have. <laughs> People really like shopping in the neighborhood. They've been faithful to the shops in the area for, for years and some people have even come in and told me the shop that used to be here 20 years ago and they remember it. So they really care about their shops in the neighborhood and they, I think they're interested and excited by the changes here. Most people would agree with Ruth Shaw, proprietor of Covent Garden Flower Shop. The neighborhood fought hard to preserve the area and look at the advantages. Single owner or family businesses like Chibos, a local eatery owned by Roberto Tizo, and personalized service is still a trademark. I hear that's uh, the nicest, uh, loveliest uh, neighborhood in town. When they come to Chibo, we call them by their first names and I, they like the friendliness and the casualness that we do offer and they love the foods. They love me and I love them. And I see. Mrs. Leggett's basket. Five minutes. Great, thanks. Some of our Rosedale clients have um, their homes on file with us, so we have photographs of various rooms. If they phone up and want something for the library, for example, we know exactly what uh, color that is, and so we just will send them along what works. Rosedale is very definitely a community of one does and one doesn't. And they don't like it very much if you step beyond the fringes of that. I tend to rebel sometimes against those restrictions. And I think there is a new young group who is moving into Rosedale who are going to shake it up a little bit. But I think eventually everybody becomes Rosedale, who lives here. Puppies will eat anything, but anything isn't what they need. Your puppy needs the extra nutrition he can get from a special food like Purina Puppy Chow. Only Puppy Chow is a special milk product Cody and ounce for ounce, more protein than the leading big dog dog foods, plus extra vitamins and minerals to help little puppies grow into big puppies. Puppy Chow for a full year till he's full grown. Now a new beef flavor, too. What? Would you like some wine? Do you like imported? Yes. Do you like domestic? Yes. Would you like to try this wine? <laughs> yes. Is it domestic or imported? <laughs> yes. 
Montmasson makes fine Canadian wines with all the quality and taste of the high-priced imports. Montmasson Canadian wines. No. <laughs> yes. Introducing new Sombrero Mexican food. You fix it at home, adding your own fresh ingredients. Sound hard? No! Nothing's easier. There's Sombrero tacos and enchiladas. Sound spicy? No! You choose mild or spicy sombrero sauce. Sound good? See for yourself. New sombrero at your grocer's. Hey, you say you're getting tired of lettuce and tomato hamburgers that don't quite make it? Yeah! Then look at McDonald's new McDLT. I'm talking quarter pound of beef on the hot, hot side. The new McDLT. Crisp lettuce and tomato on the cool, cool side. The new McDLT. Cool, crisp. The beef stays hot. The cool stays crisp. Put it together, you can't believe this. Could be the best lettuce and tomato hamburger ever. It's a good time for the brain. Take the McDonald's new McD. Help me. All neighborhoods have their secret places for kids and adults, but the Rosedale Ravines are enjoyed by people from all over the city. Paul Scrivener, naturalist and Rosedale resident, can often be found wandering the many footpaths that crisscross the ravines. This is what I call my ravine. I first discovered it when I was a little boy, and I've been in it for all my life. Uh, when I was a little kid, I used to come down here and explore, as kids are want to do. But uh, as time went on, I recognized this is an important place for me because I could get away from things. This is my Shangri-La, if you will, in the middle of the city, my little escape. You know, it's hard to believe that if things had gone according to plan, I could have been standing in the middle of a four-lane freeway right here in the middle of Rosedale. And that's the way things looked 12 years ago with the Crosstown Expressway proposal. And thanks to North Rosedale and South Rosedale ratepayers and other ratepayer groups and neighborhoods across the city, this expressway proposal, which was envisaged for our neighborhood, was defeated. And I think that we have a much better result now. It's not tidy, it's not organized like some of the other communities in Toronto. One feels that one can relax. The ravines are beautiful and um, they are very wild. They're not manicured and I've always, in my travels, I've always loved wildernesses. I love the Moroccan desert. I love the Amazon. And... Uh, <laughs> I love Rosedale. When I was a kid, Moordale House was a haunted house. But now it's a source of great pride to those who live in Rosedale. It's the only community center which is solely funded by those who live in the community. Each year we hold Mayfair as a means to raising money. And if there's anything that exemplifies community spirit, it has to be made there. When I was a boy growing up in Toronto, I didn't even know where Rosedale was. And it's my understanding there used to be a bridge with a guard, so you couldn't get in. But Rosedale, inevitably, is changing. Harry Rasky, writer, filmmaker. It still maintains its great conservative nature. Uh, it is a bulwark of privacy. In fact, people in Rosedale very seldom talk to each other, except on this one day of May Day, when everybody pretends they've gone to the state fair. And uh, it's quite remarkable. the largest community fair held in this city. I don't think there's anything quite as large as this with, with no money uh, coming out at the end, or not a whole lot of money coming out at the end. It really is just to have fun and to show the kids a good time. Children don't sleep the night before in anticipation of this event. <laughs> Michelle Beckelade, 
Mayfair coordinator. It really starts to happen on the Thursday before Mayfair. The whole park is set up like this. There are 500 volunteers involved who, who go as far as calling us up to make sure that they're included in the list. And if you come here Sunday at noon, there isn't a trace of a Mayfair, not even a paper on the ground. Uh, it's just an amazing community effort, and I think that's why I get involved in it. I guess everyone experiences the need to roost sometime in their life. I left Rosedale and I went abroad and worked abroad for about 16 years. Lived in British Columbia, but when that urge came upon me, I came back here to Rosedale. My brothers did too, and so did some of my old school friends. I'm not sure why. I guess because this is home for us. Where else would we go? I'm, I don't regret having grown up here. I, that may seem a very strange thing to mm -hmm. say. But, but you have to face life uh, as someone who's grown up in Rosedale or Westmount or one of those places where the rich live. And so yes, the lucky ones. The lucky ones. Yes. But, but we were given something that was very special, I think, and it's very important for me to remember that what was here was all front. It's a facade. But once you get into your life, if you recognize this was a facade and keep the other values, the strong values that are here, you've got something worth having. <laughs> 